Welcome to the Bundy Broadcast on Community Radio 1. I'm your host, Ellen Bundy. Today we will be discussing whether or not the school curriculum should include students who are negotiating gender and sexual identity. I'm joined in studio by Josephine Collins, Principal of Greenfern Primary School, and Vanessa, a 16-year-old homosexual student. Before I talk to my guest, let's look at some of the key concepts within the topic. Let's talk about curriculum. The health and physical education curriculum is what teachers use when planning their lessons and we can argue that it is difficult to find gender and sexual identity in the primary school years. Gender identity can generally be defined as the gender-related identity appearance or mannerisms or other gender-related characteristics of a person. This includes male, female and intersex. Sexual identity refers to how people signal or communicate their sexual orientation to other people. Bill Shorten has confirmed Labor's commitment to financing the Safe Schools Coalition, assigning an additional $6 million to the Sexual and Gender Diversity Program. The Safe Schools Program has raised a lot of questions and debate about the topic of health and its inclusion of students who may be negotiating sexual and gender diversity. Ms Collins, I'm interested to hear your views on this. Thank you, Ellen. I am in full support of the curriculum, including students who may be negotiating sexual and gender identity. We know that LGBTI students are more likely to experience bullying at school, have higher levels of social and mental health problems and greater difficulty connecting with others than heterosexual young people. The effects of this can lead to dangerous use of alcohol and drugs, dropping out of school and self-harm and attempted suicide. As educators, we have a duty to our students to provide them with safe and inclusive environments that cater for the diverse needs within our communities. All students are entitled to a safe and inclusive education and to have a sense of acceptance and belonging within their school community. This is supported by the Victorian Equal Opportunity Act of 1995, whereby it is unlawful to discriminate against a student's sexual orientation and or gender identity. We have an obligation to our students to ensure they are all provided with relevant and meaningful learning experiences and this should be reflected in schools policies and values, their teaching practice and the supports and services available to students as well as the curriculum. The health curriculum needs to include sexual and gender identity to not only ensure all students feel safe and included but to also help combat bullying, abuse, stereotypes and homophobic and or discriminatory attitudes. Any aspect of the curriculum is only effective if it caters for the diversity of all students. We want our students to develop positive attitudes towards themselves and build positive relationships with others, to acknowledge and respect diversity and explore different beliefs and values whilst considering how these influence behaviours both within and outside of the school community. Our live Twitter feed has gone crazy with listeners' opinions. I would like to read one person's statement that argues with the inclusiveness in the curriculum. At John Doe says, teachers and schools don't have the right to teach our children about these issues. People have different beliefs and values and it is not up to schools to change our children's beliefs and tell them how they should think. Children are too young to fully understand these topics anyway and it would only confuse them. Josephine, what would you say to parents who have concerns and or disagree with the curriculum teaching about gender and sexual diversity to young students? Well, firstly, as a parent myself, I understand the concerns they have. Schools and educators are obligated to consider the safety and well-being of all students and provide them with information and experiences that will help them form and develop their own understanding of the world we live in, as well as their beliefs and values. By ensuring that that schools have effective and inclusive policies and supports, as well as providing teachers with appropriate training and resources, the inclusion of sexual and gender identity in the curriculum will be delivered at age-appropriate levels and with relevant and meaningful experiences that supports all students in developing their sense of identity and belonging. I would like to make mention of Howe's 1997 framework of educational opportunities worth wanting, which supports the inclusion of accurate and positive information regarding gender and sexual diversity in schools to ensure that all students have educational opportunities worth wanting. In order for LGBTI students, their parents and gender non-conforming youth to have meaningful opportunities for success in schools, information about their lives and their families must be integrated across the curriculum. People who argue that gender and sexuality identities should not be included in the curriculum need to know the facts. And these facts are that at least 10% of young people are same-sex attracted and at least 4% of young people are transgender or gender diverse. Further to this, 61% of same-sex attracted or gender diverse young people in Australia have experienced verbal abuse, 18% have experienced physical abuse, and 80% of these homophobic or tran- and transphobic incidents have taken place in schools. 
LGBTI young people at schools where protective policies are in place are more likely to feel safe compared with those schools without similar policies. They are almost 50% less likely to be physically abused at school, less likely to suffer from other forms of homophobic abuse, less likely to self-harm and less likely to attempt suicide. National and international research shows a supportive and inclusive school environment is essential for all students to be healthy and happy and achieve their full potential. It is my firm belief that all students have the right to a safe and inclusive education. If we don't teach about sexual and gender identity during primary and secondary education, then we are more likely to see higher levels of bullying, harassment and mental health problems and issues amongst our LGBTI students and community. As educators, it is our responsibility to provide health knowledge that enables all students to make informed decisions including being able to identify harms and strategies for minimising such harms. As an educator and a parent, I want all children to grow up with a positive sense of identity and belonging and to live in a world which supports equality. Awareness, education and understanding is the key to acceptance in our schools and wider society. Actively promoting diverse sexualities and genders as valid choices in schools does not bring harm to anyone, but actively denying their existence does. Vanessa, how do you think we can avoid young people becoming victims of bullying and harassment? Well, girls who like sports get labelled a tomboy. Boys who like dolls get labelled as gay. In 2009, Stonewall was quoted, people seem to be very de definite in their ideas of what a proper boy or proper girl should be should do or be interested in. It takes very little deviation from these so-called norms for a person to be singled out and picked on. We need to be having conversations addressing these stereotypes and the way to do that is to include a diverse curriculum where we are all taught what it means to be gay or straight or trans and that there is no one way to define it. The Netherlands includes pregnancy, STIs, homophobia and sexual orientation curriculum. If the Netherlands can do it, then why can't we? I would like to have, have learned about different organisations that could have helped me negotiate this period of my life as I do feel comfortable talking about these issues with my family, friend, as I didn't feel comfortable talking about these issues with my families, friends or teachers. There are support groups such as Rainbow Network which discuss these challenges of being who you are in an unaccepting society. Inclusion of this in the curriculum would help students greatly. Someone on Twitter has written, if we talk about being born female but identifying male or it is okay for being for two males and two females to be in a relationship, won't that lead to more people choosing to be gay, lesbian or transgender? Let's get one thing straight. Being gay or lesbian or transgender or intersex is not a choice. I don't wake up every morning and decide, yep, I'm going to like boys and girls today or I tr I'm tired of girls, I'll be hetero this week. It is who we are. In answer to your question, the answer is no. Opening discussions about the different ways to identify oneself will allow young people understand their feelings and what is happening as they develop and grow into being adults. Hopefully this will reduce the likelihood of LGBTI suffering from mental health problems or illnesses. Vanessa, thank you for opening up and sharing your story and views with us. I understand it would be very difficult for you to do so and we appreciate your courage. I would also like to thank Miss Josephine Collins for being courageous as well in discussing this issue. That concludes our broadcast for today. Thank you for listening and we hope you have a good day. Until next time, Bundy out.